Hi friends, welcome to this career guidance tips for entrepreneurs. Basically, design thinking is a very rudimentary approach for every entrepreneur. We'll be discussing about the concepts and examples in detail. Design thinking is nothing but a, a problem solving approach that puts the needs of users at the center of the design process. It is a creative and iterative process that helps designers, innovators, and problem solvers come up with human-centered solutions. Now, here are the rudiments of design thinking simplified into six steps, although most of the literature talks about five steps of empathize, define, ideate, prototype, test, but there is also a sixth step called as implementation. Basically, we're all designers. Day in and day out, without our knowledge, we pass through all these steps, empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and uh, test. We learn about the audience from whom we are designing by observation and interview, and then create a point of view that is based on the user needs and insights. Then we brainstorm and come up with as many creative solutions as possible, build a representation of one or more of our ideas to show it to others, and then finally, share the prototyped idea with the original users and feedback. And then we have the implementation stage. So design thinking, what we'll be discussing here, when it comes to entrepreneurs and startups, it has to be a structured up approach. And that's exactly what the Stanford Design School says. So empathize is nothing but on interviews, shadowing, seek to understand non-judgmental, then define on personas, role objectives, decisions, challenges, pain points. Ideate is all about sharing ideas. All ideas are worthy. Diverge and converge. Yes and thinking. Prioritize and prototype. Mockups, storyboards. Keep it simple. Fail fast. Iterate quickly and finally testing. Understand the impediments. What works and what doesn't work. Role play. Iterate quickly. So this is also uh, empathize is the first uh, point, first step. It empathize basically understands the users. The first step is to empathize with the people you are designing for. This involves observing, engaging, and interacting with them to gain a deep understanding of their needs, desires, and challenges. Empathy allows you to see the world from their perspective and helps you identify the real problems that need solving. So in the process, deeper understanding, you need to consolidate what you do and what you don't know and connect with the user audience, carefully consider research approaches, learn by observing and asking, then learn, develop a shared understanding and empathy. So here, let's go. The empathizing stage in design thinking is the first and foundational step in the design process. It involves developing deep understanding of the users and their needs, wants, and pain points. By empathizing with the users, designers gain valuable insights into the real challenges they face which helps in creating solutions that are truly relevant and meaningful. Let's explore the key aspects of empathizing stage in design thinking. So we see the world, then appreciate them as human beings, understand their feelings, and then communicate your understanding. So the first one, when we are seeing on empathize, you know, all these come into a uh, picture. The first one is the user research. This the process begins with conducting extensive user research. This may involve interviews, surveys, observations, and other methods to gather information about the target users. The goal is to understand their behavior, motivations, emotions, and preferences related to the problem you are trying to solve. Next one is the immersion and observation. Designers immerse themselves in the user's environment, experiencing what they experience. They may spend time where users live or work, observing their daily activities, routines, and interactions with the existing products and services. Then is empathy building. It's all about putting yourself into the shores of the users to truly understand their perspectives and feelings. Designers practice active listening and open-mindedness to empathize with the challenges and aspirations of the users without any judgment or preconceptions. Identifying pain points during this stage, designers identify the pain points and problem faced by the users. These pain points are the opportunities for design interventions that can make a positive impact on the user's lives. 
User personas are fictional representations of different user groups, capturing their characteristics, needs, and goals. Creating personas helps designers develop a clear understanding of the various user segments they are designed for. Empathy maps are visual representations that consolidate the gathered information and insights about users. These maps highlight what users think, feel, say, do, and what their pain points and gains are. Empathy maps help to synthesize the data and create a shared understanding among the design team. Empathizing also involves refining and framing the problem based on user insights. The problem statement should be focused on addressing real user needs and serve as a guide for the subsequent stages of the design process. By investing time and effort in empathizing stage, designers can develop a strong sense of empathy for the users, enabling them to design solutions that resonate with the user's true needs and desires. Empathy lays the foundation for the rest of the design thinking process, ensuring that the consequent stages are user-centered and re solutions are relevant and meaningful. Let us take an example of redesigning a commuting experience. Suppose you are part of a team tasked with improving the commuting experience for public transport users in a city. You start by engaging with commuters, observing them during their journeys, and conducting interviews to understand their pain points and needs. You might discover that lack of real-time updates on bus schedules and uncomfortable seating are significant issues faced by the users. Next one is the defining stage. You frame the problem after understanding the users, the next step to define the problem you want to solve. Based on the insights gained during the empathy phase, clearly define the problem statement. It should be focused, human-centric, and specific enough to guide your design process effectively. The defined stage in design thinking is the second step in the design process, following the empathizing stage. In this stage, designers and problem solvers use the insights gathered during the empathize stage to synthesize and define the core problem they want to address. The defined stage is crucial as it helps the team gain clarity and focus on the specific challenge they need to tackle. The goal is to create a well-defined problem statement that serves as a guide for the rest of the design process. Let us discuss the key aspects of the defined stage. First one is synthesizing insights. The team reviews and analyzes the data collected during the empathize stage. They look for patterns, common themes, and recurring pain points among the users. By synthesizing the information, they gain a deeper understanding of the user's needs and challenges. Based on the insights gained from the user research and empathy, the team formulates a clear and concise problem statement. The problem statement should be framed in a human-centric manner and should focus on addressing the needs and aspirations of the users. The defined stage often involves transforming the problem statement into a series of how might we statements. There are open-ended questions that invite creative thinking and encourage brainstorming for potential solutions. For example, if the problem statement is, how might we improve the public transport experience for commuters, a corresponding how might we statement could be, how might we provide real-time updates on bus schedules. Identifying during the defined stage, the team also identifies any constraints or limitations that may affect the design process. This could be related to budget, resources, time, or technical feasibility. Understanding these constraints helps in creating practical and viable solutions. The team may need to prioritize certain aspects of problem or scope of the project to make it more manageable. This involves determining which pain points or user needs to address first and settling realistic goals for the design process. In defined stage, it's essential to ensure that all stakeholders are aligned and have a shared understanding of the problem statement and project scope. This alignment helps in getting everyone on board and invested in the design process. The defined stage sets the direction for the design process, providing a clear problem to solve and guiding the subsequent stages of ideation, prototyping, and testing. By defining the problem accurately, design thinking teams can innovate, create, and target solutions that truly address the needs of the users and deliver meaningful outcomes. And based on the insights gathered during the empathy phase, 
we define the problem statement as follows. How might we improve the public transport experience by providing real-time updates and making seating more comfortable for commuters? Next stage is the ideation stage, which generates more creative solutions in this space. We brainstorm and come up with as many ideas as possible to solve and define a problem. Encourage wild and diverse thinking without judgment. Use techniques like brainstorming, mind mapping, or even role playing to explore different possibilities and generate innovative solutions. The ideate stage in design thinking is the third step in the design process following the defined stage. This stage is all about generating creative and innovative ideas to solve the defined problem. During ideation, designers and teams aim to think outside the box, explore multiple possibilities, and come up with a wide range of potential solutions. The goal is to foster a culture of creativity and divergent thinking, allowing for the exploration of different concepts. Here are the key aspects of the ideate stage. Ideation encourages diverse thinking, which means exploring as many ideas as possible without judgment. The focus is on quantity rather than quality at this stage. The team generates a vast array of ideas, no matter how wild or unconventional they may seem. Brainstorming is a common technique used in ID8 stage. The team gathers together the shared ideas freely and build upon each other's suggestions. The facilitator ensures a supportive and non-critical environment to inspire creativity. Various ideation techniques are used to stimulate creative thinking. Some of these techniques include mind mapping, brain writing, role playing, scamper, we call it as substitute, combine, adapt, modify, put to another use, eliminate, reverse, and what if scenarios. Then crazy eight is a rapid sketching exercise where team members individually create eight different sketches or concepts in eight minutes. This exercise helps in generating a large number of visual ideas quickly. Drawing analogies from unrelated field or using metaphors can trigger innovative thinking and inspire unique solutions to the problem. Using visuals like sketches, diagrams, or storyboards can aid in expressing ideas and concepts effectively during ideation sessions. In the, the focus is on generating a diverse range of ideas without worrying about their feasibility or practicality. Later in the process, these ideas will be evaluated and refined. Collaborating with diverse team members brings different perspectives and expertise to the ideation process, enhancing creativity and leading to more robust solutions. Sometimes combining multiple ideas can lead to even stronger and more innovative concepts. The team explores how different ideas can complement each other and be integrated into a comprehensive solution. And finally, towards the end of the idea stage, the team evaluates and selects the most promising ideas to move forward to the next phase of prototyping and testing. Idea stage is critical for fostering a culture of creativity, encouraging open-mindedness, and exploring a wide range of possibilities. It helps in generating a rich pool of potential solutions, which will further refine and develop in the subsequent stages of design thinking. So if you see the user case of redesigning a computing experience, during the ideation phase, your team brainstorms ideas to solve the defined problem. Some ideas that emerge include developing a mobile app with real-time bus tracking, introducing adjustable seating options, and adding cushions and improved comfort. You encourage free thinking and explore all possibilities. The next stage is on prototype, building a quick and simple solutions once you have some promising ideas. It's time to create prototypes, rough, scaled down versions of your potential solutions. These prototypes can be sketches, models, or even digital mockups. The goal is to quickly and inexpensively bring your ideas to life so you can gather feedback and refine your concepts. The prototyping stage in design thinking is fourth step in the design process following the ideate stage. In this stage, designers create tangible representations or mockups of the selected ideas from ideation phase. Prototyping allows the team to turn abstract concepts into something concrete and can be tested and iterated upon. The primary goal of prototyping is to gather feedback from users, stakeholders, or potential customers and refine the design before committing to full-scale production or implementation. 
Here are the key aspects of the prototyping stage. During this prototyping, designers create physical or digital prototypes that give visual or interactive representation of the proposed solution. The level of fidelity, that is the detail of the prototype, can vary based on the stage of development and the feedback. That's what we normally call it as building tangible representation. Then prototyping is an iterative process, meaning that multiple versions of the prototype may be created and refined based on user feedback. Each iteration helps improve the design and brings it closer to the final solution. In the early stages of prototyping, designers often use low fidelity prototypes, which are quick and simple representations of the ideas. These can include sketches, paper prototypes, or basic wireframes. As the design matures, high fidelity prototypes are created. These are more detailed and realistic, often resembling the final product more closely. High fidelity prototypes may include digital mockups, interactive prototypes, or physical mockups, which with more advanced materials. Prototypes are tested with real users and stakeholders to gather feedback on the design's usability and functionality and the overall user experience. User feedback is invaluable in identifying strengths and weaknesses and guiding further improvements. Prototyping allows the team to identify flaws or limitations early on the design process. If a prototype fails to meet user needs or exploitations, it's easier and less costly to go back and make changes compared to doing so after a full product development or implementation. Based on the insights and feedback obtained from testing, the team refines and enhances the prototype to address any issues or suggestions. This iterative approach ensures that the design continuously evolves and improves. Prototyping often involves collaboration with various stakeholders. Designers work closely with end users, clients, and team members, incorporating their input to create a more effective solution. Finally, prototypes serve as a powerful tools to communicate ideas to stakeholders and decision makers. They provide tangible representation of the design, making it easier for others to understand and provide feedback. In our example, in this phase, you create a prototypes for the most promising ideas. For the mobile app concept, you might build a basic interactive wireframe that showcases a real-time tracking feature. For the seating improvement, you could create a physical mockups with adjustable components and cushions. These prototypes allow you to visualize and test your concepts. The fifth one is testing, where we gather feedback and iterate with our prototypes hand in hand. Go back to the users and gather feedback. Watch how they interact with your designs and listen to their thoughts and reactions. Learn from their feedback, identify what works and what doesn't, and use these insights to refine and improve your solutions. Iterate through the design process as many times as needed until we arrive at a developed and user approved solution. Design thinking stage, designers and teams put refined and improved prototype through real world testing with end users or stakeholders. The primary objective of testing stage is to gather feedback and evaluate how well the prototype addresses the defined problem and meets users. By testing the solution with actual users, the team can validate assumptions, identify any remaining issues, and make final adjustments before moving to full-scale implementation. Here are the key aspects of testing stage. First one is real user feedback. The test stage involves getting the prototype into hands of actual users or stakeholders to gather their feedback. The focus is on observing how users interact with the design and listening to their thoughts, opinions, and suggestions. Usability testing evaluates how easy and intuitive to design is for users to navigate and use. The team observes how users perform specific tasks with the prototype and identifies any usability challenges. A-B testing, sometimes this is a split testing can be conducted where multiple versions of the prototype are tested simultaneously with different user groups. This allows the team to compare the effectiveness of different design elements or features. Based on the feedback received during testing, the team iterates on the decision design making approach, necessary adjustments and improvements. This iterative process helps in fine tuning the solution 
and making it more user centric. Testing allows designers to validate or challenge the assumptions made during the earlier stages of the design process. It helps to ensure that design decisions are based on real data and user needs. Sometimes prototypes may fail to meet user expectations or may reveal unforeseen challenges. Failure analysis helps team learn these experiences and understand how to improve the design for future iterations. The feedback obtained during testing is carefully analyzed and relevant changes are incorporated into design. The goal is to address pain points, improve usability, and enhance the overall user experience. Through interactive, iterative testing and refinement, the prototype involves into a final design that has been thoroughly vetted and validated with real users. The insights and data gathered during testing help inform the final decision-making process. The team may choose to move forward with the current design, pivot to a design approach and a different approach, or gather further feedback before proceeding. Finally, as the design is validated, the team prepares for full-scale implementation, taking into account any resources, timelines, and processes required. This testing stage is crucial for ensuring that design is successful in addressing the identified problem and meeting user needs. It serves as a bridge between the design development phase and implementation phase, providing the necessary feedback to create a solution that truly makes a positive impact. When we come back to the example with, our, with your prototypes ready, you go back to the commuters and gather feedback. You observe how they interact with the mobile app and gather their opinions on the seating improvements. Based on their feedback, you realize that real-time tracking feature is highly appreciated, but the adjustment seating is not as comfortable as expected. So the, finally, it is the implementation phase in design thinking, which is the stage where refined and validated solution is brought to life. This phase involves planning, executing, and launching the final design to solve the identified problem and meets the user's needs. It is a crucial step that requires collaboration and coordination among the team members to ensure a successful and impactful implementation. Let's delve into key aspects of the implementation phase in design thinking. Before executing the solution, the team needs to create a detailed plan for how the design will be implemented. This plan should include a timeline, resource allocation, roles and responsibilities, and any potential risks and challenges that need to be addressed. The goal is to ensure a smooth and efficient implementation process. It may be beneficial to conduct a small-scale pilot test or build a more advanced prototype to further validate the solution before the full-scale implementation. This step helps identify any remaining issues or improvements that need to be made before the final launch. During the implementation phase, effective communication and collaboration among team members are essential. Each member should understand their role and work together towards the common goal of successful implementation. Regular meetings and updates are crucial to keep everyone on the same page. Even during the implementation phase, design thinking maintains its iterative nature. Feedback from early users or stakeholders can lead to further improvements and refinements in the solution. The team should be open, making necessary adjustments based on real-world feedback. Consider the scalability and long-term sustainability of the solution during implementation. Ensure that design can accommodate growth and handle increased demand. Additionally, think about the resources and processes needed to maintain and support the solution over time. Once the implementation plan is executed, the final solution is launched for wider use or adoption. During this stage, it's crucial to closely monitor the performance of the solution, gather user feedback, and measure its impact on solving the identified problem. This information can guide further improvements or potential updates. Design thinking does not end with the initial implementation. Continue to learn from user experiences and real-world usage. Use the insights gained from inform future inter interaction, iterations and enhancements to the solution. The goal is to create a continuous improvement cycle to ensure the design remains relevant and effective. As we use the feedback and make adjustments, we improve the seating design by using higher quality cushions and adding armrests. You then reset the prototypes with the commuters gathering further feedback. This iterative process continues until commuters express high satisfaction with the, with the solutions. Remember that the implementation phase is not the end of the 
design process. Design thinking is cyclical and after implementation, the team may need to revisit certain stages, especially if new challenges or opportunities arise. By embracing a user-centered iterative approach, you can create solutions that truly make a positive impact on users and their needs. Remember that design thinking is not a linear process. It's iterative, meaning you may need to go back and forth between the steps, refining and improving your ideas as you learn more about the users and their needs. This approach encourages creativity, collaboration, and a strong focus on delivering solutions that truly address the user's problem. As we have seen, one of the defining characteristics of designing thinking is its non-linear nature. Unlike traditional linear problem-solving process, design thinking follows a more flexible and iterative approach. It comprises several stages that may be revisited and adapted throughout the process based on new insights and feedback. By following these steps and incorporating feedback from users, you ensure that your final design is user-centric, effectively addressing the needs and pain points identified during the empathy phase, whether it's public transportation, product design, service improvements, or any other field, the rudiments of design thinking can be applied to various real-time scenarios to create innovative and user-friendly solutions. So thank you very much for your attention. And let's see, let's meet some other occasions.